Hello, my most amazing artists. Welcome back to art class. For our next project, we are learning a little bit about the Northern Lights, also known as the Aurora Borealis. If you have not done so yet, and if you have not watched the Brain Stuff video, What Are the Northern Lights, then you should hit pause on this video and go watch that link first and then come on back. But if you've already watched that video, then you're in the right place because we are going to be creating our own pictures with the Northern Lights in the background and some wintry looking trees in the foreground. Now, these examples are using a lot of colored pencil in the background and my trees are painted as well as the snow that is added on top. Now, since we are at home, I know that some of you are very limited in your supplies, so they're not going to look exactly like this one. We are going to create one that instead of using paint, I am going to create my trees with a simple black crayon. If you have that, you could do it with colored pencil as well. However, if you do have paint, I do encourage you to give those materials a try. But I am going to show you how to do this with more simple materials so that you can use what you have. Remember, that is always how we're doing all of our lessons. You are using what you have. Now, about the Aurora Borealis. All right, if you watched the Brain Stuff video, it talked about how basically what the Aurora Borealis or Northern Lights are is they are the result of solar wind making its way through the barrier uh, that the Earth has in our magnetosphere. And when those solar rays hit our atmosphere, they explode into these beautiful mixes of color, which cannot be seen during the day because they are outshined by the sun. But if you are lucky enough to be super duper, super, super north uh, during any of the time when the Aurora Borealis is uh, is um, occurring, it can be a very beautiful not phenomenon. It is something that is on a bucket list for me if I were to ever have a chance. And sometimes when we are lucky, they can sometimes come down as low as New Jersey, but it is a very rare occurrence and you would have to hope for absolutely perfect weather, no clouds, absolutely nothing that could interrupt and uh, our viewing experience. It happened once, I chased them with my friends, and it was a cloudy evening and we saw absolutely nothing. So you win some, you lose some, right? But we are going to create our own Aurora Borealis. It is up to you which way you want to hold your paper. You can hold your paper vertically, up and down, or you can do them horizontally. Since I have two vertical examples here and one horizontal, I'm going to do another horizontal examples. I'm going to move you guys a little closer to the paper and we're going to talk about how you can create that Aurora Borealis background and then how we can add some trees on top. To start working on your Aurora Borealis or your Northern Lights pictures, you're going to create your background first. There's a few different ways that you can create this background. Um, if you want, you can start from the center with your color choices, kind of creating a circle and kind of fanning your way out into different colors. I started with a yellow in the middle of this one, which gradually made its way out to green, then blue, and then some purples and pinks on the edges. That's one way that you can color it. Another way that seems to be pretty popular is to kind of create these ridges or up and down movements. I'm gonna tilt you guys up a little bit here. Uh, with this example, you can see that the colors kind of go up and down and kind of dance around in a wavy pattern. You can see the same thing with this one over here. This one, the student pressed a little bit harder. This one on the bottom here is also a good example of a way that you can make your northern lights if you are looking to really make your colors stand out. You could use a black colored pencil to create a darker background and have some individual swirls of color going through if you so choose. So really the background is completely up to you. I have chosen a series of colors that I'm gonna create um, some swirls with and then I think I might fill in a little bit of the top with the black similar to this one But I want to make my background as colorful as possible Like you can see with the ones here. You're using a lot of up and down movements and making um, very jagged Movements not so much scribbly. There really shouldn't be any loops but a lot of up and down motion just kind of making my way across the paper dipping, ducking, maybe coming around, maybe popping back up really quick, and just sort of filling that in. Your color pencils are going to be a little light at first, or your crayons, whatever it is that you're using. If you have chalk pastels or oil pastels, those are also uh, good things to use. 
items. I'm gonna jump from my yellow here. I'm gonna jump into a pink and you can kind of blend those two together a little bit and it's all right for it to be very jagged. It doesn't have to be perfectly smooth and neat. All right, a lot of times these colors are very erratic. If you take the time uh, with this project to do a little research, hop on Google, Google the Aurora Borealis. There are so many amazing videos and photos of the Aurora Borealis that can give you some inspiration and help you figure out what you want to make yours look like. Maybe you'll see one with particular colors that you like that you want to give a try. I'm going to throw a little bit of blue in here. I'm going to make this blue a little bit smaller, a little bit thinner. And you are covering your entire paper with color. It does not matter where you're putting your trees. You are literally just covering this entire paper with color. There I have created my colorful background. Um, I could take some different colors, kind of smooth it out a little bit more. Maybe where like this yellow and this orange meet, I can kind of take a more yellowy orange color and kind of blend them together a little bit more. So it's kind of up to you if you want to play around with it. I added a little bit of that black at the top. And then I am going to figure out where I want to put my trees. Now, the thing about holding your paper vertically is you can make some really super tall trees. You have the room for that. But if you are making your paper horizontal, you want to make sure that your trees are not too tall because you don't want to block your Aurora Borealis. That is basically the main focus of this project. So I'm going to do this with crayon. I feel like crayon layers pretty well on top. I may try doing a tree with marker just to see what it looks like. We can play around a little bit here but we are making these pine trees. So pine trees usually help to start from the top and just kind of fill them in. So I am going to kind of just mark, I'm gonna have a tree there, and I am going to start filling in the silhouette of my pine tree. When I do pine trees, I actually feel like they're a lot easier to color in them, but you would be doing the same technique if you're using paint. You're just kind of, kind of, so you're not going to go back and forth with paintbrush because that's not how you use a paintbrush. You're going to use it to make your paint strokes as such. I am going to go off my paper a little bit here because I want to make sure that I fill a bottom. And when you're filling in the center of your trees, you really want to fill it in. Try and make it dark so that you can really see the silhouette of your trees like so. I may make one next to it that's a little bit shorter. Just remember you don't want to go too tall. We don't want to outshine our Aurora Borealis. my silhouetted trees. Now the only other thing that's missing from this project that I have on these examples up here is the snow. So if you happen to have any white snow, you can take either your paintbrush or you can turn the other side of your paintbrush and dip that in white and kind of dot some snow. If you do not have white paint, that is not a big deal. Um, if you have white out, you can dot some white out around, you know, kind of be resourceful. But other than that, if you do not have white paint, do not worry about including the snow. You can simply have the Aurora Borealis or the Northern Lights and a few trees in the front. So remember, if you're doing a more vertical version of this product, project, you can have some taller, skinnier trees. And if you're doing horizontal, you want to make sure that you're not covering your Aurora Borealis. And that is your project for right now. So you are going to create your own Northern Lights. Make sure you take a picture and send it to me so I can grade it. And I cannot wait to see your beautiful Northern Light creations. And I hope that you have a lot of fun with this. Be creative, choose colors that you like, and I will see you guys again next time for our class. Bye!